Albert Einstein, Richard Branson, Bill Gates, John F. Kennedy, Tony Robbins, Michael Phelps, Will Smith. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of industries. What else do they have in common? Well, they all have ADHD, but you don't hear much about that, do you? You know what you hear even less about? The successful women navigating ADHD. And that's exactly why I started this podcast, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka. I'm an attorney, not a doctor, a lifelong student, not a coach. I'm also the creator of Cortography, a patent pending system that helps people like you figure out what they should do with their life. And we're here today to talk ADHD, your superpowers, your symptoms, your workarounds, and how you proudly stand out instead of trying to fit in. I credit my ADHD for some of my greatest superpowers. And you know what? I spy a happier life for you too. So without further ado, a shiny new episode is starting now. Hello, I am Tracy Otsuka. I wanted to welcome you to episode 58 of ADHD for Smartass Women. And I'm going to start by reading an Apple podcast review from Mishu4. I am so appreciative for your review, and so I want to acknowledge you. Here goes. The title is, I have come to love my ADHD diagnosis with a big, beautiful exclamation point at the end. Tracy helps me to feel normal and super normal at the same time. Her podcast has provided me with awesome aha moments and self-understanding. For years, I've been doing workarounds and filtering without even noticing I was doing it. Now I know why and how. But I'm also more aware of my strengths as a woman with ADD, and I've come to exploit them and accomplish bigger tasks. Thank you so much for your lovely review, Miss You Four. This is everything that I hope to accomplish when I started out creating this podcast. I just love that you are now focusing on your strengths and learning about how your particular ADHD brain works and why you do what you do, because the only way we can change what we want to change about ourselves is by first understanding why we do what we do. And I'm also thrilled that you're starting to understand how to exploit your strengths and ratchet up a little bit every day what you can accomplish. So today I am going to share five hacks with you in the form of resources that I have discovered for the most part since I've started this podcast that have literally changed my productivity both professionally and personally. And I'm going to really try not to get into all kinds of details because I know you will tune out. Instead, what I'm going to try to do is just cut to the chase and tell you why these resources or hacks make a difference to my brain and why I think they'll make a big difference to your ADHD brain. So let me start by giving you a quick rundown of the resources. Number one is stickies for Mac. Number two, multiple desktops. Number three is a Chrome app called Tab Resize. Number four is the Bear app. This is the best app ever if you are sick and tired of losing everything. And number five is Kajabi. I originally wasn't going to mention Kajabi, but if you have any kind of business, especially one with an online presence, it is literally the best thing out there. Okay, so first of all, Just so you know, I use Apple products. Seven or so years ago, I was so angry about something Apple did. It was probably some human rights violation I read about. And what I did is I canceled all my Apple stuff. And I went to, remember that big Android phone? I think it was called the Note and a Microsoft laptop. I literally lasted a month. It was a complete and total disaster. It just wasn't intuitive to me. You know, it had been so long since I actually had a PC and nothing seemed to connect together or sync. I couldn't find anything. And then my family was still on Apple everything. So it was just a mess. And so I slinked back and ended up having to return the PC and the Android phone and Then I ended up buying a new MacBook Pro and an iPhone. So when I'm speaking about these resources that have changed my personal and professional productivity, I'm often talking about Apple resources and applications, 
but most of them do have an Android PC Windows kind of option. Okay, so let's talk about number one, stickies for the Mac. There is a comparable app for Windows, and I think it's called Sticky Notes. So this whole episode, podcast episode number 58, it actually started because I posted in our Facebook group, ADHD for Smartass Women, asking for help regarding post-it notes. And by the way, I suspect that 90% of post-it note addicts are ADHD. (laughs) I mean, I try so hard to keep my physical desk space clean because cluttered work environments equals a cluttered brain to me. But no matter how hard I try, I would constantly end up with a desk full of post-it notes by the end of the day. And some of these post-it notes, I mean, they would literally stay there for weeks. And so my thought was, well, why don't I get an app that puts my post-it notes on my desktop screen? Brilliant, huh? So I started doing all this research, looking into all these post-it note type applications, and I have two criteria for all applications. Number one, it has to be completely intuitive and easy. And number two is I need there to be a fast in and out, or I just won't use it. For example, planners. I cannot use a physical planner because it takes too long to find the month and then find the week and then find the day. So my planner, as you all know, is a one page planner, eight and a half by 11 folded in half and it's on cardstock because it's easy in and out. And so if I can get to it quickly and get in and out, I am going to use it. So anyway, I am looking for this new post-it note app that I could use with my computer with my MacBook. And so my wonderful group members, I go to the group, I ask them about this and they're throwing out all these options, some of which I've tried unsuccessfully before, some I haven't. Then Abby Z chimes in with, well, why don't you just use the Stickies app that comes with your MacBook? And I'm like, what? What Stickies app? My MacBook comes with a Stickies app? Why didn't anyone tell me this? I've only been using a MacBook since they, I don't know, first came out. I think 2009, 10. (laughs) So anyway, if you go to that little search icon up at the top right hand um, side of your computer, it looks like a little magnifying glass. I didn't know this either, but you can search for anything on your computer. So if you put stickies, type stickies into that little search icon, the app pops right up and it is super intuitive and really easy to get in and out of on the stickies app. You can keep notes, make lists, you can save pictures, you can group multiple photos, you can float a sticky note. They look like post-it notes, so they're yellow, just like post-it notes. And you can float a note on top of everything if it's really important. It's awesome. Now, I'm going to tell you that we are creatures of habit, right? And that means that if we have post-it notes, physical post-it notes, and pens or pencils on our desk we're gonna continue to revert back to physical post-it notes. Get them off your desk. My post-it notes are now inside my desk and every once in a while when someone is talking and I can't get to the sticky notes app quickly enough or I forget about it and I need to write something down really quickly, I will grab a post-it note. But once I'm done, I will always transfer that information to that sticky note that sits on my desktop. This is the thing though. I have made it now a habit to open up stickies when I sit at my computer. But even if I didn't, it literally helps to calm my brain down, not to have all these yellow post-it note reminders all over my desk. And the thing is that most of the time, as I said, you know, they can just sit there for weeks and I don't do anything with them anyway, but I'm scared to throw them away because I might forget. So now they can sit on my computer desktop. They're saved. I'm happy and I'm okay with that. Every couple of weeks, I'll go in and I'll clean them out and I discover how much I actually got done and also how much that sticky either didn't matter or took care of itself by my doing nothing. The thing is though, I know it's clean, I know it's organized and I know it's safe on my desktop. Okay, number two, multiple desktops. You know what your desktop is, right? It's on your computer. It's the first thing that you see. It's the screen that you save things to, if you're anything like me, right? So it gets pretty crowded and messy. 
And often I'm working in an application or creating a document in Google Docs or I'm on the web and suddenly I can't find my file. I can't find my document. Where did that web page go? Whatever it is, I can't find it because I usually have so much crap open that's all on top of each other. And I'm scared to close these windows because then I'm going to forget that I need to buy that thing on Amazon or read that article. You got me, right? You understand, right? And I'm telling you those times when I wake up in the morning and my computer has restarted, I'm actually relieved because it wipes everything out for me. It's almost like the computer's saying, uh, enough already. You're now messing with my brain and I have no bandwidth, memory, whatever they call it, left to give you. And so I've got all this crap open and I can't find my document. And so I have to close everything. And there it is at the very bottom. Does that ever happen to you? Well, if you don't already know about this, you are going to love it. If you're on a MacBook or a, a Mac desktop too, right? Press the F3 key on your keyboard and you will discover that the Mac has multiple desktops. The reason I often couldn't find things is because I had three desktops open and I didn't even know about it. This multiple desktops is also so helpful because, for example, you can create a desktop that's a personal desktop, and then you can create a desktop that is for your main business. And then you can create a third desktop that, let's say you've got a side online business, and maybe a fourth desktop for, you know, things that relate to your kids. So no one desktop is so cluttered that it becomes completely unuseful to you. I think actually... Apple calls these spaces rather than desktops, by the way. And you can have up to 15 spaces on your computer, which frankly sounds like a nightmare to me. But anyway, so Lou M in our group, in our Facebook group, shared this multiple desktop hack when we were talking about post-it notes again on my desktop. So I was worried about how would I even see them, like these post-it notes, if there were a bunch of windows open on top of each other, and what a mess that would be when I did see them. And Lou said, Tracy, create multiple desktops. And we all went, wait, 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 what? This multiple desktops has been one of my favorite discoveries. And I understand that the PC Windows, they have a multiple desktop option as well. And I'm sure there's a millennial or a Generation Zer that is literally rolling her eyes right now. Stop it, or I'm going to ask you what floppy disks are or how to use an answering machine. How does an answering machine work? <laughs> anyway, once I discovered multiple desktops, I also discovered Stacks. Again, I was thinking about, all, and just so you know, all of this is going to be in the show notes. So if you want to go and learn how to use stacks, learn how to use multiple desktops, get stickies to work on your computer, I will have it all in show notes with links. Okay. So once I discovered multiple desktops, of course, I discovered this new thing called stacks. Again, I was thinking about all these yellow stickies littering my desktop, right? How about all the screenshots, the photos, the documents, all that stuff that is all over my desktop all the time? So Stacks is part of Mac OS Catalina, although I think it was part of Mojave too, but I didn't know about it. What Stacks does, you're not going to believe this, is it instantly arranges files into separate stacks by type. So for example, PDF documents are in one stack. Music is in another stack. Movies are in a third, fourth stack. And screenshots are in their own stack, which I don't know about you, but I use screenshots all the time. And I can have hundreds on my desktop in, you know, a couple days time. So you have all those separate stacks, but your folders are still there on your desktop and they're kept separate. So what you do to get to Stacks is you just click on your desktop and then go up to the bar at the top that says Finder, you know, your Finder screen. You want to click on View and then you get to a drop down menu and just choose Use Stacks. You only have to do it one time and Stacks will automatically organize your desktop. It also makes it so much easier when you want to go in and delete files. Although I have to tell you, it's so neat and organized. I think the danger might be that I never will, right? Go back in and, and delete things. And then I understand there's a Windows application that is called Fences that does the same thing. Okay, my third ADHD hack that changes how I work. Love this application. It's called Tab resize. It's a Chrome app 
that literally splits your screen into various layouts. Now, most of the time, I just use it to split my screen down the middle so that, for example, on the left side, I can record this podcast using this app that I use called Zencaster, but my screen is split down the middle. So there's a, it's almost like a separate desktop right next to it that would have my notes up for interviewing my guest. And that would be on the right hand of my screen. Okay. So let me explain to you like how I would use it. I use it to create my newsletter. Okay. So when I create my newsletter, I use tab resize and I split my screen into quadrants. You can choose how you want to split your screen. So in essence, I have four separate screens. That way I can have my newsletter application up in one quadrant, like on the left hand side, right top. And then our Facebook group, I can have up in another quadrant on the right hand side so that, oh, I don't know, I can find posts that I think you'd be interested in and then place them into the newsletter. And then in the third quadrant, I'll have Canva, which is this graphics program that I use, and that can be up. And that way I can search for graphics that will work with the newsletter while literally looking at the newsletter. And then in the fourth quadrant, I might have something like, I don't know, Libsyn up, which is where my podcast is hosted. So if I needed to pull in links or look at stats while I'm on the newsletter, I've got that all up. Now, I have a separate, and this is a game changer too, you need a separate screen. If you're working on your computer all the time, you need a separate screen. And it took me literally a decade to finally get one, but it is a huge game changer. So I use tab resize with my 27 inch Thunderbolt screen. And so my computer, my 27 inch screen is cut into quadrants. So four different screens, right? So I have four separate screens on my one desktop. Now, if I'm just using my laptop again, I will only use the split screen. So one screen on the left and one screen on the right, but it is just the game changer. And I want to tell you why I think it's a game changer for those of us with ADHD brains. It's because I don't have to go outside of the four corners of my screen to get my work done. Everything is right there. Whereas before I would have to leave, you know, the main screen I was on to go find my Canva app or to go find my Facebook group or to go find my Libsyn app. It just got so painful going in and out, trying to remember what the hell was I trying to do because of all the back and forth. And because of all the back and forth, I was much more likely, because it was so painful, right, to deal with this, to get sidetracked, to get the hell out of there. And somehow all of a sudden I'd look up and, oh, how did I end up on Twitter? And I've been here for 30 minutes. I love Twitter, by the way. So having everything there on the four corners of my desktop not having to leave to go find something, it really improved my focus and therefore my speed in getting things done. I absolutely love tab resize and I believe it's free as well. I don't think I paid a penny for it. Okay. Number four, ADHD hacks that change how I work. Bear the Bear app. And I raved about the Bear app in podcast, um, I think it was episode 30, which was all about the Apple Watch. Since then, I have used the Bear app every single day since that episode aired six months ago. And I have converted so many people to Bear because I can't stop raving about it. Even my very linear brained husband, he's a banker, so he's super linear brained, right? He got so sick of me talking about it and telling him he had to try it that he finally did. And in December, he couldn't stop talking about it either. So he's moved everything over to Bear as well. So I had to bring Bear up again because it has literally given me back my sanity. It is the best app I have ever used to organize my life. I no longer lose anything. Okay. Yeah, no, that's not really true. I do still lose things. You know, my sunglasses, my favorite Muji mechanical pencil, sometimes my AirPods, but I no longer lose information ever. So if you heard episode 30, you will remember that I tried everything as far as, you know, applications to 
just save things for me so that I could go back and I could find things that I wanted to find. I tried Evernote and Notability, and I tried this thing called Rocketbook. I tried saving things in my phone contacts. I would write things in notebooks, but then, oh my gosh, how are you supposed to go back into a notebook and find anything, right? And so ultimately I had landed on Apple Notes and I had been using Apple Notes for a couple of years and it was pretty good. I had all these files set up in Apple Notes and you know I was worried about losing them. And it wasn't perfect, but it was perfect enough that I wasn't willing to try anything new until I did episode 30 of the podcast and I discovered Bear. Okay. And so since then, I have used Bear every day and I want to tell you why I love Bear so much. As I said in episode 30, if aesthetics are important to you, they're very important to me. I'll tell you that Bear is so much prettier and cleaner than anything else out there. It's it's really beautiful. You can have a black theme, you can have a white theme, you can have a solarized theme, which is basically it's cream in color. I use the white theme. I always like things light and bright as possible. And the way my brain works, simple, beautiful, good design, it just calms my brain down. When things are cluttered, when there's poor design, it makes me literally focus on the clutter and the poor design. So I'm not even paying attention to what I should be paying attention to. Okay, why else do I love Bear? And this is the main reason I love Bear. In Bear, I can tag everything. Apple Notes uses folders. And often I have trouble finding things because one note could be in a number of folders. So I can't remember where I put it. Now I just tag my notes and it's so much easier to find anything. So let's say I create a note and I add, I don't know, it's about podcast ideas, you know, ideas that I want to remember for the podcast, right? And so I add these podcast ideas to a note. And by the way, I can do this on my phone. I can do it on my Apple Watch. I can do it on my MacBook, my iPad. They all speak. I can do it anywhere. When I say they all speak, I mean they all sync together. But let's say that there's some overlap, right? Because I want to remember these ideas for the podcast, but I'm also writing articles about these various things. So I want to make sure that the information that I put on this note that I'm creating, I can pull it up when I'm not specifically looking for a podcast idea. For example, let's say that I'm thinking of a podcast episode on RSD or emotional dysregulation, and all of these things kind of overlap, right? Certainly RSD and emotional dysregulation do. So if I was in Apple Notes, I would have to figure out which file am I going to put it in? Do I create a file on podcast ideas and topics? Do I create a file on RSD or emotional dysregulation? I mean, what I really want is I want three separate files so that I can find it when I need it, right? If I have to think about what folder I might have put something in first, it just makes me anxious all the time. Like I'm going to lose that note because I don't organize things like a linear brain person does. I really struggle with that question of what folder should I put things in? So I'll find it when I need it. And depending on the day, I don't always decide to put things in the same folder. A neurotypical brain person will probably listen to this and think, what the hell is she talking about? But if you too have a nonlinear brain, I think you'll know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. It's almost like I kind of feel my way through life. If I have to figure out what file something is in, I almost have to get into my body first. And then that leads me to how I was feeling when I organized the file, which then takes me to the correct file name. It sounds crazy, but that's how my brain works. And that's the beauty of Bear. There are no files. I type out my note and I hashtag it. So that podcast topic, I would hashtag as podcast ideas, hashtag RSD, hashtag emotional dysregulation. When I'm looking for it, then weeks or months later, I'll remember one of those hashtags and I will be able to find it. Knowing that I can tag the note in a number of ways and just get rid of the whole angst about what file to put the note in, it is a game changer for me. And as I said, it syncs with my MacBook, my iPad, my iPhone, but it also syncs with my Apple Watch. So what that means is I have the complication on my watch face. So there's actually an icon, the bear icon. It's a little blue bear. Actually, I think the bear is white, but the icon is blue. Um, There's an icon on my watch face. So wherever I am, 
I can literally take a quick note using my voice. And then when I get back to my laptop or when I have an opportunity with my phone, I can then organize that note by hashtags. And remember, my big question is always, can I get in and out of it quickly? With Bear, it's really easy to do that. So guess what? I use it. I use it every single day. I want to give you one more example on Bear. So over the years, I've added all of our paint colors to my contacts. And for some reason, I didn't know what else to do. So I put them in my contacts on my iPhone. And as we painted rooms in our house, I would add more paint colors into the contacts on my iPhone. The problem was every time I upgraded my damn phone, they would all get wiped out, meaning I never had any paint colors And that was my life. I was constantly trying to find things and I never knew where they were. Did I put it in Apple Notes? Did I put it in my contacts or my emails? Or maybe it was in a message on Facebook or Instagram. And it was like that with everything. So with respect to the example on the paint colors, what I did, I went into the garage, I took my Bear app, and I literally took a photo of every paint can in there with the paint number. And then I put a note as far as which room that color paint is in. So when I go back to Bear looking for my paint, all I have to do is put in, for example, my son, hashtag Marcus, hashtag bedroom, hashtag paint. And there it is. And it is never going to be lost again. And you can do this with all of your notes, with directions, with menus from holiday dinners. There were articles that I would find and I wanted to save them to read, lists of books I wanted to read, a restaurant that I heard about, that special coconut water that I saw on Shark Tank that I wanted to try. I even put words, I don't know if this is what happens with your brain, but lately there are basic words that I use all the time that I just cannot remember. I always forget them. So I put them on bare. I recently added three things that make up a certain theory that I always forget as well. Literally anything, links, the name of someone I just met with a photo of their business card. Because you know how you meet people and you don't need their information right away, but you know sometime over the next year or two years, you're going to need to talk to them? Well, I can do that now on Bear. Anything at all that I want to remember. My son tells me about something he'd love to have. I put it in Bear under his name add hashtag gifts. And six months later, when his birthday comes, I have a list of things that he would actually really like. I'm not just, you know, running through the store, just buying anything because I need a birthday gift. There, I think it's $15 a year. And again, it's only available for the iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Apple Watch. And I cannot find a workaround that you can use on a PC or um, Android. If you know of one, if you learn of one, please let me know. Okay, the final thing that I want to tell you about, I wasn't sure, again, that I was going to include this, but I know that so many of you are entrepreneurs. A lot of us have online businesses, and this application literally turned my entire business life around. If you're not entrepreneurial, if you don't run an online business, you can just stop the podcast right here. You can get off because this will not pertain to you. But I, like many of you with ADHD and very entrepreneurial. I have always had a business. I've always been running a business since I was eight years old. You know, I had a high-end women's wear company, 60% of our business was Saks, Neiman's and Nordstrom. You know, I have a real estate brokerage. I ran a little aerobics company in college. I've always done something entrepreneurial. Four years ago, I started an online business, cartography. You've heard about it because I talk about it every once in a while. And this online business totally knocked the wind out of me. Running an online business, it's really different than an offline business. There is so much to know, learn, and do. And the terrifying thing is it changes overnight. It really sucked. And I started to wonder what was wrong with me. Why could I run a business before, but all of a sudden I couldn't do it? And 
I have a feeling that this is a very common thing among those of us with ADHD brains. Look, when I had my designer women's wear company, it was a hell of a lot of work, but it was doable. We had four seasons we had to design for. We created samples to take to shows for the major markets. In order to get buyers to the shows, we would put models in the samples. We would take photos. We would create a postcard with information, which we would send to the buyers. We created books with line drawings of each style, what sizes we were going to offer, what fabrics we were going to offer in what styles. It was a lot of work, but it made sense. The online world is so completely different and overwhelming. Again, there is so much to learn, know, and do. And I was convinced that I needed everything. And it all moved so quickly, right? So if you have the kind of brain that likes shiny things, there was always something new to look at. And I found myself researching everything ad nauseum, paying for all kinds of things I thought I needed, but ultimately I didn't. I just ran around chasing my tail, constantly convinced that this next big thing, that was going to be the be all and the end all. In the summer of 2017, I found myself in such overwhelm because not only did I have all these new applications that integrated that I had to pay people to put together for me because I didn't know how to use any of them, but right before a major launch, my assistant up and bailed on me. I couldn't even go into my WordPress or my Squarespace website, that's what I used at the time, and make a simple change. And I just knew I had to start from scratch. I felt so out of control and I knew my brain would not be happy until I knew how to use all of these applications I was paying for because I was so convinced that I needed them, right? And I'll tell you that you cannot, and I know this firsthand, I tried to do it time and time again, but you cannot delegate successfully until you know how to do what you're delegating. And so that became my mission. Right around then is when a friend of mine who ran her own digital marketing firm, her name's Cindy Ball, she told me that she was looking at a platform called Kajabi that was built just for online business owners. And I looked at it. And I was terrified because it basically meant that I had to scrap everything I had done and I had to start over. But right then and there, I decided to get rid of my two websites that I couldn't do anything on myself, my two course and digital product platforms that I also was unhappy with, Thinkific and Teachable. I got rid of ClickFunnels and Instapages and Lead Pages, which is what I created my sales page and my landing pages on. The fact that I didn't know how to use any of these things is why I was frankly paying for all three of them. Instapage, ClickFunnels, and Lead Pages. I also got rid of ConvertKit and ActiveCampaign, their email automation applications, and I couldn't use either one of them. And remember, on top of all those monthly charges, I had to hire programmers and designers, which is, was an even bigger, more expensive nightmare. So what I did is I canceled all of these applications that I didn't know how to use. I think it was something like $567 a month or $587 or something like that. And I moved it all to Kajabi which I paid $119 a month for. And I taught myself to use everything in Kajabi. I can now build my own website, my own landing pages, my own sales pages. I don't have to anymore, but I know how to do it. I could send out my own newsletters and my own email campaigns. I could build my own course platform and make changes to my own courses. I am convinced that the reason I could do all of this and learn how to do it was because of their 24-7 chat, which meant that whenever I needed help, even if I was on a hyper-focused, you know, bent working at 3 a.m. in the morning, I could get help and I knew that that meant that I could teach myself how to do this. My brain, it does not learn reading directions online. I have to do it and I have to have someone to communicate with when I get stuck. Not the next day, not the next hour. No, I need someone to communicate right then and there. And the thing about it is Kajabi was so intuitive, so user-friendly, I could actually do it. It was easy and it was easy for my brain to understand because everything that Kajabi has is all linked together. Now, I'm a raver, but I rarely rave. Okay. And my kids make fun of me about this all the time because they know that one of my values is excellent. So I can be kind of tough, but when I'm really happy, I literally cannot shut up about it. I cannot stop raving. I think that's what this whole podcast is about, right? And I'll be straight up that I'm an affiliate for Kajabi. So if you go to the show notes to look for the link, that is an affiliate link, but you need to know that I am not an affiliate for any 
anything else. It is truly because Kajabi gave me back my sanity, my confidence that I could learn this. It gave me back my life. I was literally working on all of these pieces to my business 24 seven and getting nowhere. I have never ever been that frustrated in my life. It also kind of coincided with my ADHD diagnosis. So the whole thing was just, I rarely swear, but a shit show, right? And you know me well enough to know that aesthetics are really important to me. And so many of the applications that I had been using, honestly, they were designed by men and they were so ugly and so dated. Now, I have to tell you, the founder of Kajabi, it's a guy, but Kajabi gives you the tools to create a beautiful online presence. Everything I use and have built is Kajabi. Just having it all under one roof was a complete and total game changer for me. And I didn't think that I could actually do all of this on my own, but Kajabi showed me that I could. I believe in it so much, and I'm so passionate about this company that it's hard for me to not talk about it. So if you are where I was a couple of years ago, I feel like I'm giving you the biggest gift by sending you to Kajabi. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email. And again, I am so happy to jump on a call with you to talk about Kajabi because I believe in it that much. And the affiliate link, it's going to give you a free 14-day trial. It is the best money I have ever spent online, bar none. Okay, so that's what I have for you this week. As always, you're listening to ADHD for Smart Ass Women. If you like this podcast, please let us know by leaving a review. Our goal is to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as we possibly can learn how their ADHD brains work so that they can discover their amazing strengths. And your reviews, they really help in that regard. You know, for me, they're like those little gold stars that we used to get on our work when we were kids in school. One more thing, if you have a comment, a guest you'd like me to interview, or a topic idea for this podcast, you can go to my website at tracyoutsuka.com and leave me an audio message or reach out to me at tracy at tracyoutsuka.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Outsuka, and we're available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you liked what you heard, we sure would appreciate a review. And not coincidentally, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, well, that's also the name of our free Facebook group. Go look it up. We're a totally smart ass community of successful, ambitious women who share our ADHD wins, questions, and workarounds. We'd love to have you join us. You can also find all my details over at tracyoutsuka.com. Don't forget, I spy a happier life for us, and I'll see you again next week.